the global donor platform approaching 2015, um, the world is a very different place from, from where it was seven years ago at the time of the global food crisis. Um, we've been through a period of seven years in which world leaders have been clearly prioritizing attention to food security and agricultural development following that crisis. But uh, we're now going through uh, economic challenges throughout the world uh, and world leaders are much more focused upon growth and creating jobs than upon a whole range of other problems that we're, we've been dealing with. And I think this is very clear in both the, the G7 outcome document and the G20 outcome document. Um, so in terms of where resources are going to be allocated, it's very important that the global platform um, sets out why food, agriculture, nutrition are key pr priorities going ahead uh, and not just in terms of the food crisis that we faced seven years ago. And I think the, the real compelling reason is that if we do pursue growth and jobs in uh, many of the poorest countries of the world, um, it's, it's critically important that that reaches the poorest people in those countries. Uh, and those will be mainly women and mainly people involved in agriculture. Can't you connect those themes? Can't you create jobs in agriculture and provide growth? Well, I think the, the, uh, the challenge is, is to um, both help people who need handouts and people who have the potential to step up um, and turn from being subsistence farmers into commercial farmers who are providing food and other agricultural products um, for consumers in the growing urban areas um, and for international markets. So it's an emphasis on um, creating trade and investment and not just handouts to poor people. Uh, this is about creating better livelihoods that will put food on the plates of rural families uh, and money in the purses uh, of rural women in a way that will be good for the climate, good for nutrition, um, and ultimately good for economic growth. Is it maybe that the G7 and G20 are talking about different jobs, different growth for different people than when we are talking about agriculture and rural development, different parts of the world? I think it is recognized that um, the future of many countries is not in rural um, livelihoods. Urbanization and industrial transformation is clearly the, the priority for many countries. But too often our, our economic economists and statisticians um, only value what they can measure and they tend to measure formal sector employment. Um, and uh, particularly the, the, the contribution to the economy that rural women make uh, in their invisible role in food production and supporting uh, the nutrition of their children and their families isn't counted, it's not measured uh, and it's not valued and yet this is critically important um, particularly for the poorest people in those countries. Where do you see the contradiction to the sustainable development goals and the countries that follow that process very much? I don't think they're inconsistent at all. Um, the SDGs are a framework, a way of organizing a comprehensive um, agenda for tackling poverty in those countries. It's still entirely consistent to say, well, we've got some very clear short-term priorities around um, growth and jobs. Um, but that will only be sustainable if it is part of a, of a complete plan to provide health, education, water, sanitation, energy uh, in a way that is consistent with being climate smart, uh, managing our natural environment. Um, so I think the challenge is to show that um, these are consistent um, and they're not contradictory. We're here with the Global Donor Platform at their AGA. What is your message to those donor staff people? How could they connect and hook into the post-2015 processes when they work on their agricultural portfolios? I think those of us who work in the rural space 
really understand these issues. But um, there is a risk that um, those who are not closely involved in agriculture and rural development will see the efforts as being relevant to the food crisis, a job done. I think the challenge for those of us who work in this area is to really demonstrate clearly that we are, what we do is fundamentally relevant to the challenges of the world today and in the coming decades um, and a priority um, and that we have a critical role to play ensuring that poor people participate in the global economic growth that we all hope to see. Do you maybe have one critical example of how that could be done, especially on the side of the global donors? I think we must, uh, something that must be done is something that we must not ignore. And that is we must listen to and work closely with our partner countries. At the end of the day, the solutions to poverty and hunger don't rest in documents produced in the capitals of the world. Um, they rest in the hands of poor people given the power to control their own lives. These things always seem to go through cycles of attention. Are we on a good phase to surf off or are we washed ashore? I think we are in a difficult time in that the world faces many other challenges and problems. Um, and we, yeah, I think we just have to do the best we can in, in a challenging world. Thank you very much. Pleasure.